Well, welcome everyone. Today in this video, I will be departing from the normal in that I have an interview with someone, uh, Sam Venning from England. Uh, how are you, Sam? I'm very well. How are you doing? I'm very well. Yes, uh, this is uh, a little bit different because Sam is actually a survivor of Kotow, uh, whereas on this channel, I'm normally talking about people who have actually been killed on Kotow, either murdered or who have died in suspicious circumstances. Now, Sam uh, is going to be giving an account of a very unpleasant incident that occurred to him back in 2013. Uh, this is uh, just over a year before Hannah Witheridge and David uh, Miller were brutally bashed to death on the island of Koh Tao. So, um, Sam, I'll start by just confirming a few things about yourself. You originally came from Somerset in England, is that correct? Yep. Yep, and you're now in uh, living in San Francisco. That's correct, yeah, I've been here for the last six years. Yep, and then what do you do for a living there? Uh, I'm an entrepreneur. I own a few different e-commerce brands. Oh, fair enough, okay. Now, um, you're 29 years of age now, as I understand it. Yep. Yep. And so back in uh, 2013, you were about 23 years of age? Oh, I believe when it happened, oh. I would have been 22. Birthday 22. is in November. 22. So, yeah. yep. Okay. Um, and uh, so you went to Koh Tao. It was in uh, your summer break, which was sort of the middle of the year. Yeah, roughly July time, I would say. Middle of 2013. And yep. uh, how long did you spend on Kotao in total? Around 10 days to two weeks from memory. Okay. And uh, you wound up cutting your vacation on Kotao a little bit short. Is that correct? Yeah. After, yep. after the attack happened, um, I yep. wanted to leave the island as quickly as possible. Fair enough. Okay. So if we uh, just go back to the events of the um, evening of the attack, uh, Earlier in the evening, you'd been uh, uh, drinking at a um, bar with um, a Canadian lady by the name of Carla Bartel. Is that does that sound right? Yeah, it was. I to be honest, I don't remember off the top of my head where we met, but I remember we were drinking in Fishbowl with a, a group of other people as well. It was pretty okay. busy. So that's the Fishbowl Beach Bar, which is owned by Band Diving Resort. Yeah, from what yeah. I remember. Yes. Yeah, yeah, and that's in the northern part of Syrie Beach. On Kotao. Okay. And then uh, later that evening, uh, you and Carla had basically gone for a walk uh, in a southerly direction along Syrie Beach. Is that right? Yes. So, yeah, we walked walked down kind of the strip, I guess, kind yep. of a lot of people refer to it as. Yep. Yep. Um, and we ended up sitting at a along a wall right, right at the very end of the strip. Okay. Um, where I believe it's kind of a, a runoff for kind of ocean water to come into yes. when, the, when the tide is up. And how close was this to the location uh, where David Miller and Hannah, Bo Hannah Witheridge's bodies were found? So what struck me that morning more than anything when I, when I saw it on the news was yes. seeing their bodies pretty much in the exact spot where I had been hit and fell off the wall. Um, yeah. You know, a lot of people I know would go and sit down there and just chat and yeah. talk. So, you know, what we weren't, what we were doing wasn't uncommon. Yes. And I guess, you know, they were just in the exact same situation that um, Carla and myself were in. And yeah. you know, fortunately, I, you know, we survived. Okay. So uh, if we just get into some details of the attack, the two of you are there and you're basically just sitting down chatting and then, um, yeah. Yeah. And OK, what, what so uh, what happened or what did you notice next? So we, we, we were sat on the wall just talking um, and I noticed a moped pull up. Yep. Yep. And so there, and again, my memory is a touch spotty. So yes, from yes. what I remember is the, the water runs off. Yes. And then there's a small bridge, yes. maybe a meter to two meters wide. Yes. Um, and I just remember someone walking over that, they, you know, they they weren't small um, by yep. any means, you know, just a, I'd say a fairly normal build. Yes. Um, and I only reason why I cocked my head at all is just because the light came in um, and I obviously heard the noise of a moped. Yes. Um, and I just saw yes. someone get off their bike and start to walk over. 
yes um the bridge and you know it didn't take really any notice of it maybe i was looking yeah. for you know half a second to a second yes. maybe yes. two seconds yeah um continued chatting to carla um and then all of a sudden i hear the scuffle of flip-flops yes uh, and i just turn around to see what's going on and as yes. i turn around i get hit i'm kind of in here around kind yes. of the forehead where they were yes. trying to go for my temple but they hit yes. me square in the face with a rock yes fortunately the rock smashed um yep. Yep. and i i fell off the wall yes i, I believe the wall between five and six feet height yes. tall enough that i can we dangled our feet off and it was a decent yep. jump off the wall uh -huh. um i fell off pretty much hit the deck uh yes. luckily it's sand so you know no real injuries there um and then all i remember is waking up seeing you know, I don't remember someone running off because well, by the time I, I just woke up and I hit Carla screaming, just yeah. you know, yeah. a noise that will kind of live with me for a long time. <laughs> yes, yeah. Um, yeah, hearing her screaming and um, you know, me just you know being like, "Are you all right? Are you okay?" Um, yeah. You know, and then you know, obviously adrenaline kind of kicks in, um, and yeah, I just remember hearing the bike, the moped, go. Yeah, um, and then. Yeah, after that, I don't know if you want me to continue. No, um, well, actually, I might just ask you, I might just cut in here. Um, when you heard Carla screaming, she wasn't standing right next to where you fell down, was she? Um, honestly, I, I, I don't remember, yep. if I'm honest with you. Yep. Um, it's, it you know, happened yep. a long time ago, yep. so I can't give you an honest answer. Fair enough. Well, the reason I ask that is because, um, you know, I've been liaising with Carla and... Uh, she said that um, she'd actually seen two men approaching with masks uh, and uh, you only ever recall seeing one person. And um, is that correct? You just recall seeing the one? Yep. Yeah, I only recall seeing one person. Um, but again, I, I turned my head for a second, right? And yeah. again, it's dark. It's you yes. know, yeah. no light. Um, you know, there, there yes. could have been two. And the thing is, after me and Carla never really had a proper conversation about it. Yeah. Um, you know. Yeah. And um, yeah, what Carla also said is that uh, when she noticed the two fellows approaching with masks, that uh, she basically jumped down and uh, ran away as fast as she could. And um, that uh, sometime later, like a minute later, um, you came down uh, to where she was and um, yeah, she'd actually run off some distance and uh, she'd, uh, bumped into what appears to have been a, well she said a, another white person um so it's i mean one of the things that struck me when uh, uh she gave me this information was it seemed to me very much that she probably saved both of you from something that could have been far worse um you know maybe you would have suffered the same fate as david miller and hannah witheridge um but i'm also aware that there are a lot of um or well, there have been a lot of reports in the past of um, both men and women being uh, raped on Syri Beach, typically by uh, yeah, after the victim has been uh, drugged. But, um, you know, I'm just speculating as to uh, what the motive of your attackers uh, could have been, whether it was robbery, um, whether they wanted to um, sexually assault uh, Carla and or you. Um, or whether they were just high on drugs, um, I don't know. But yeah, as far as the motivation goes, I was asking you before we, uh, before when we were chatting, whether you think that you might have done anything while you're on the island that might have upset any of the ties. Um, you know, as I said previously, I, yeah. I don't think so. Yeah. Um, you know, I was young and you know having a good time. Yes. Um, what I will say is I, I knew people that lived on the island. I hung out with them while I was there. Yes. Um, I even drank with, you know, local Thai people, people who yeah. work for bands um, at yes. the fishbowl pretty much every night. Yes. Um, I did a, a lot of diving. And the other thing I did as well is I bought a bunch of burgers from the mainland. Because yep. one thing yep. everyone asked for is they don't have McDonald's there. Can we bring McDonald's? Yes. So I bought, you know, yeah. I think like 30 or 40 burgers. Yeah. It felt ridiculous going from Bangkok yes. with burgers. <laughs> But about 40 burgers and yes yes you know made made like 15 friends immediately because everyone wanted a burger yes um so you know off the top of my head no 
Mm. But again, I appreciate, you know, you can kind of be ignorant to certain things. Uh, yeah. But one thing my friends did say before I came out, be very respectful of Thai people and, you know, their cultures and their yeah. norms because um, you don't want to get into any trouble. So I was I always tried to be cautious of that. Yes. Um, but yeah, from, from what I know, no, I, I, I don't believe I did anything wrong. Okay. I mentioned to you before that there is a small army of trolls who actually watch this channel and they also follow mm -hmm. my um, Facebook page, which is Koh Tao uh, Death Island, and they follow my uh, Twitter account, which is just uh, Ian Yarwood underscore law. Um, but um, many of those trolls will make comments to the effect that so long as you uh, respect Thai culture, you won't get into any trouble. And if you get into any trouble, you've brought it upon yourself. Uh, what do you have to say to people who make those sorts of comments? It's, it's not true. You could apply that logic to absolutely anywhere, right? Yeah. Stop, uh, you know, a psychopath yeah. attacking you. Um, the other thing I, I, I've known about the island for a long time and even was spoke about with my friends who lived there at the time um, was about the level of corruption on the yep. island and what to do if you get in trouble and what to do with the yes. police and yep. everything else. So it's, it's not like a normal place. Yeah, that logic yes. may apply for most of Thailand. Yes. But I feel that, you know, there's a, a great deal of corruption in Koh Tao. I've also heard yes. about, you know, stories about the mafia and everything. Again, I, I'm not privy to it. I don't know what's true and what's yep. not. Yeah. Um, but what I do know is that it's not the same in Western civilization if you get arrested and what to do with the police. Yes. Um, so, you, you know, no, I would call that a crock of shit, to be completely yep. honest with you. Yeah. Um, yep. you know, it's, it's, it's obviously not a safe place. And I'm sure if you, if you could find real statistics of what happens per capita, mm. then it's going to be way higher than, you know, your average town, city, or yep. anywhere else in the world. Yep. So, no, it's, mm. you know, yeah, you know, it may go some way towards getting you in trouble, but you look at the massive rate as to what's happened there. Mm. All of those people, A, no one deserves mm. to, um, you know, to get raped or killed because mm. they did something that a Thai person disagrees with. Mm. Right? It's okay to have cultural disagreements, but it's never yep. okay to go to the extent of killing someone mm. or assaulting them. Yep. So, no, it's... it's okay. Well, thanks, Sam. Well, before I actually move on to what happened um, after the attack, just going back to the, um, uh, the fellow that you saw, you said he was like a normal height, normal build. So mm -hmm. you, uh, your opinion was that he was far larger than uh, people like Wai Pyo and Zor Lin, who were the two Burmese guys who were scapegoated for killing Hannah Witheridge and David Miller because one of them was only about five feet tall and the other one was mm -hmm. just under five feet tall. So they were absolutely tiny. So you'd think that they, the fellow that you, or the figure that you saw was considerably larger than that. 100%, yeah. Okay, I, what, the reason being that morning when I saw um, Hannah and David's death on yep. the news, yep. I, I immediately said, it, it, it's not them because yeah. it's it's too much of a coincidence that it happened in the exact same spot. The yeah. only difference is I believe theirs was with a garden hoe and I was hit with a rock. It was all, yeah. almost as if they tested something on us. It yeah. didn't work. Now we need to be more brutal in order to make sure that we can right. you know, okay something to happen. Okay, so uh, anyhow, after you after you've you've been hit uh, uh, in the face by the rock or in the head by a rock. Um, and Carla said that you had, or she reported to me that you had um, blood streaming down your face. Mm -hmm. um, so you managed to meet up with her uh, after the attack and you're feeling fairly groggy at this stage, I understand. Right. And um, then later that night, uh, you had to stay with a friend of a friend and sleep on their sofa, was that right? Correct, yeah. yeah. So um, I, that evening, um, I went back, I was actually staying in a friend's place that they yeah. weren't living in at the time in a, in a, in a hut, kind of almost yeah. like in the middle of the jungle. Yeah. Um, and I contacted some friends who basically sent me the address of a friend of a friend yeah. uh, who I, I woke them up in the middle of the night, knocked on yeah. the door. Um, 
and yeah they you know they were very sweet about what happened like this time i still had blood on my face i didn't yeah. really know what to do and i was yeah. probably slightly concussed as well and yes. yeah they let me stay on the sofa okay so um you said that you woke them up in the middle of the night approximately what time would the attack have occurred was it sort of midnight or one in the morning or just roughly R- sure. roughly at, at, at the at the end of the night Maybe. Right. So, you know, when, when things started to die down, we'd, we'd walk down to the end of the beach, uh, okay. you know, chatted because it's a little bit quieter. Yeah. Okay. It wasn't when we were walking back, it wasn't full of tourists whatsoever. So no. I couldn't, I couldn't give you a, a time, but you know, so whenever things start to close down, that's when. It okay. All right. Fair enough. Now we don't have to be precise. It just gives people a bit of an idea mm-hmm. as to what transpired. And then um, uh, the next morning, uh, did you wind up reporting the attack to the local police? No, it, everyone that I know there, when I spoke to there, was basically like, "Don't bother. It's too. Right. You know, there's too too high a level of corruption, and yes. either way, nothing will happen anyway." Yep. Okay. Okay. So, uh, and did you seek any medical treatment uh, after you'd been hit in the head? No. So that that night, um, it was pretty bad. My when I was I kind of cleaned myself up yep. um, at, at the other person's house. Yes. Um, and, you know, it, was, it wasn't, from what I remember, wasn't severe enough that it needed stitches. Yep. Um, and again, I'm young, stupid, in hindsight, probably should have gone to a doctor to get, you know, either a scan or something or just to make sure I wasn't concussed. But no, I, I, I didn't seek any medical, medical yeah. treatment. Okay. And uh, so how much longer did you stay on the island after uh, the attack? Two to three nights, I, could, I I was struggling to get off the island because yes. um, I couldn't afford to pay for yeah. the ex- more expensive ferry. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I was there, you know, for a couple of nights, and yeah. Yeah, it wasn't wasn't enjoyable. The people that were there were, you know, obviously were kind to me and trying to help yeah. me, but you know, when something like that happens, it really knocked me to six. You just want to leave. I just yeah. didn't feel comfortable. Yeah, I just wanted to leave. Correctly. And you did, but you had been planning to stay there uh, for a longer period of time. Yeah, I was. I, I was by myself so i i didn't have to you know go anywhere or leave you know i was just staying i really i was really enjoying the island i was also really enjoying it, it was the first time i had scuba dived so i was yeah. loving scuba diving and yeah, yeah you know i i was in no rush to leave yeah. and actually one thing that you were telling me before is that one of the instructors um, who was teaching you at uh, band's diving resort was actually the um now infamous santi cockpool um was that right yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. He took me on one of my um, advanced scuba dives, or maybe even a couple. Correct. Yeah. If, uh, for those viewers who haven't seen one of my earlier or some of my earlier videos, um, I've made some videos about Santi Cockpool, who had um, sliced open the uh, the left side of the neck of a Scottish tourist uh, in the Fishbowl Beach Bar back on the fifteenth of August, um, twenty twenty. So that uh, is something which is fairly recent. So that's something for you to look at at on my channel. But um, Santi uh, has got a reputation with people who first meet him uh, of being extremely charming and friendly and so forth. But he's got a very dark side as well. And uh, Sam was telling me before that you found um, Santi to be very charming and friendly when you met him. Yeah, I, you know, we we had drinks together and he was lovely to me but also i knew people that lived on the island mm, yeah okay all right and um so uh everything sort of uh had went its own way i understand that carla well carla told me that um she left um Kotal the next day or it might have been the same if it if the attack happened on that morning she may have left the the same day but within 24 hours she'd left the island mm-hmm. um and uh I think you were saying that you hadn't, you didn't see her again after you got hit, after you were hit on the head. Correct. I yeah. didn't see her again. Yeah. That, yeah. Once you uh, departed that night or that morning, you didn't see her again. Yeah. Okay. And then, um, of course, if we move uh, way forward to the um, 15th of September uh, 2014, which was the day that Hannah Witheridge and David Miller were found murdered on Syrie mm-hmm. Beach. Um, it seemed that um, Carla contacted you at that time. Yeah, so I, I received a message uh, on 
Facebook from her on my my old my older Facebook account. Yes, yeah. And I, 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 from what I from memory, it's there's something along the lines of, "Have you seen what's happened yeah. on Kotal?" And you know, turn the television on, look on BBC, and there's reports yes. about Hannah and David. And o- yeah. only then had it. I feel that had it sunk in. Yep. what had really happened yep. um you know i i didn't see men in masks i didn't see anyone's face yep. right it was it yep. was dark i just remember you know the outline and the stature of somebody and yes. you know for, obviously with carla seeing that you know it's a, a very much more of a real experience for her and you know i, yes. I don't blame her for running yes. at all yeah. um yeah. well she probably yeah. saved you by running i mean if, oh, if, she, if she'd been uh if she'd stayed there with you and uh that hit her with a rock as well. You might have both been in um, real trouble. Oh, so. I, I, I don't doubt. I don't yeah. doubt. It was. It, it would have been very, very bad. But only when I saw that, I, I really realised how fortunate I was mm. to be alive. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, and um, I think I showed you just from my iPhone um, mm-hmm. uh, some text conversations. Does that all look mm-hmm. familiar to you? Yes, yeah, that's my that's my picture. That's a picture of me in Germany during yeah. my study year abroad. Yeah. Okay. And so um, it seemed that uh, well, uh, Carla's told me that she got in touch with the um, Foreign and Commonwealth Office um, mm-hmm. shortly after Hannah and David's bodies were found and uh, alerted them. But we don't really need to. We alerted them about what had happened with mm-hmm. you and with her uh, a year earlier. Um, but uh, you were saying that you also contacted um, some authorities uh, after Hannah and David were um, murdered. Can you tell us a little bit about that, please? Yeah, I I contacted the Thai consular in London. Yes. Uh, basically, number one, saying that I, you know, I, I, you know, I, I have, I, I just know. I basically told them that you know, yeah. I had information and I could, I could probably be of assistance. Yes. Um, in in what happened. And um, what was their response? Nothing. Crickets. Nothing. No reply. <laughs> Crickets. Yes, that's the story yeah. of um, <laughs> that's the story of people trying to uh, bring bad news to the attention of uh, Thai authorities. You get often get crickets. Mm-hmm. Or they'll just try to discredit you, um, mm-hmm. go out of their way to try to, to discredit you. And um, did you contact um, any of the British police at that time? No. No, no, I, I, I didn't. To be honest, I, I didn't think about, you know, the, the Met or anyone else would be involved, yeah. if I'm yeah. honest with you. Um, you know, I thought that those would be the best people to contact. And, yeah, yeah sadly, they never replied. Yeah. I, did, I did think about reaching out to Hannah and David um, Hannah or David's family, but it didn't feel appropriate, you know, right. at all. It felt, okay. felt wrong to yeah. do that. Okay. And you didn't contact any media in Britain at the time? No. Again, just it just just didn't think about it really, you know, didn't didn't no. feel like it was right. Tried to go through the what I felt at the time was the appropriate channels. Yeah. Well, um, look, I, well, I think that uh, we've covered uh, a great deal in our chat today. It's uh, it's morning where I am, of course, and it's uh, mm-hmm. early evening where you are there in San Francisco. So thank you very much for your time, Sam. Um, perhaps we might chat again in the future if there's something that I think of or there's something that you think of. But sure. I think that um, you've uh, done a great service to a lot of people by uh, shining some light on a very um, ugly incident. And... Um, Mm-hmm. You know, and some of the corruption and crime there on Kotao. So um, I think that people will owe, uh, owe, do owe you a, a debt of gratitude. Um, so, look, thank you very much. I may be able to follow up with a, an interview with Carla at some time in the near future, uh, but you're the first uh, of the two of you I've spoken with. And Carla, of course, um, at the time she had come from Winnipeg in um, Manitoba in, uh, in Canada, and I understand that she's now living in uh, Verdun in uh, the same province of Manitoba in Canada. Um, but we might be able to chat with her at a later time. So hopefully there'll be another video coming. And um, as always, if you like the video, please give us a like and um, leave any comments um, beneath because those comments really do help the YouTube um, algorithm. Um, Sam probably knows all about algorithms and um things like that in his line of work. I think uh, Sam's a lot smarter and a lot wealthier than I am. I'm a mere lawyer here in Perth, Western Australia. (laughs) (laughs) 
So I've only got a few million, but he, he's wealthy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, look, thanks again for your time. Um, Sam, was there anything else you wanted to say or add? Oh, you know, Ian, thank you. Um, you know, I know you, you, you put a lot of time into this. And to be honest, I I had assumed, assumed before you reached out to me that, you know, sadly this was, you know, dead and buried and, you know, the, the poor people that are being convicted were, you know, victims of a system. And hopefully at some point, you know, these people could maybe see the light of day and get some, you know, and Hannah and David's family can get some real justice as well. Yeah, okay. Well, let's, well on that note, we'll... Um... We'll end and uh, thank you very much, viewers, for watching. Thanks again, Sam. All the best. Yeah, and cheers, Ed. Bye bye.